year. Has that continued this year? He has. He has. He's become what I like to say as a linebacker. You see him start making linebacker plays instead of just highlight real plays that, that he can make, um, the, the plays that we expect him to be able to do to doing his job. Um, and then when obviously when the lights come on and the, the, the plays are there to be had, uh, that's one guy that has shown that he can do it. And, uh, you know, but sometimes as you go into that junior year, some, you, know, you, you put a lot of pressure upon yourself. And we already throw a lot of pressure on these guys. And then you put it on yourself. And whether it's coming from wherever, home, friends, all those different things, the reality is we need you to play within the framework of the defense, be really, really, really good at what it is that you do, and everything else will handle itself. Front row middle, Todd. Top four from Camp Repository. No expense, Adolphus Washington. I think outside of the coaches' offices here, a lot of people have high expectations for the type of season that they can have. What are your expectations for those two guys? I mean, are they going to be guys that are going to be highly talked about across the country? I, I think they will. I mean, that, that time will tell. Like I said, we're asking them to be the very best at what it is that they do. And, uh, you know, we try to have those little ideas. Hey, we're going to give you objectives. And we don't want you worried about all your personal goals and different things like that. That if you have objectives, you have objectives of the defense, you have individual objectives, at the end of the year, you can evaluate the goals. So we got to keep those guys that are highly, you know, that we believe can do a lot of things and people outside believe can do a lot of things, highly motivated to be a part of a, a 1 11th of their unit. And, uh, you know, again, we do expect that they can do a lot of things. The great thing that those guys will provide for us is versatility. They aren't just, well, D Adolphus Washington is only a defensive end, and Noah Spence is only a, a viper. No, those guys can, can move a little bit. All of a sudden, you see one down inside, or you see one on the other side. And they, they provide us uh, the ability to not just play one position. I think that's the thing um, that, that, uh, that makes it exciting about what that front seven, what those guys can do. Back row left, Dave. Hey, Luke, Dave Metzl. Um, leadership. John Simon's not here anymore, Zach Warren's not here anymore, and you got a young defense over there, a lot of talent, but who has emerged and who will we see kind of take over some of those leadership roles? Uh, leadership is one of those buzzwords that everybody wants to talk about and you know who are the leaders and who is this and who is that and, and the reality is like we said we're, we're going to be a, a, a group and we're going to be 11 guys and you know at one, at one point in time it might be one guy, another point in time it might be another. Obviously you know, your Christian Bryant, your C.J. Barnett's, those guys, your Michael Bennett's, those guys have been in the program for three and four years. Um, are going to be those guys that we lean upon? And, uh, you know, we, we put them in those situations in those tough times. But the reality is, is we need every one of these guys. And we need these guys to start with leading themselves. And that's sometimes those pressure things that start to happen. I know that, um, you know, Ryan Shazier is a great example. He's a guy who wants to be this. He wants to do that. And, and sometimes you just got to pull him back and say, hey, let's work. lead yourself and others will follow. And I think that's what we're really trying to see here in the next three, four, or five weeks, whatever coach is going to do. Um, but the reality is, as we start to build through the season, you know, not always the guy that's voted captain is the greatest leader. And I think Coach Vrabel said it this morning in the staff meeting. He said, I wasn't voted captain in my senior year, but I felt like I was one of the best leaders. And I, could, I was one of those guys there and know that that's exactly the case. And that's what you start to see throughout the year. You know, when you lead yourself, then all of a sudden people start following. And that's what we're going to try to find out is, you know, we've got some guys that maybe haven't been in there as much. And we'll, we'll get a good feeling for as those guys, when the tough times hit, who are those guys that still lead themselves, who have that, that still that same fire and that passion and energy uh, that's contagious to help other people. So. Have you seen any of that John Simon kind of trade out of any of your guys? Uh, I, mean, I think there's a bunch of guys that got it. The, the, the problem with, with great leadership is consistency. And that's... The tr to me, the trigger of a, of a great leader. It's not always a great motivator. You know, I think those are two different things. Someone talks about a great leader. What does a great leader have? They're humble. They're obviously, they, they care about others, and they're consistent in what they do. And that's what you got to see throughout a season. Maybe we haven't had that guy or those younger guys that have been able to prove that yet because, you know, they haven't been in those situations. So I think that's what you start to see. If you want to say the greatest trait about John Simon is the most consistent person you could ever find. You know, it didn't matter what the score was. You were up 30 or down 30, whether it was 100 degrees out or it was 35 degrees out. You know, and I think that's as a leadership thing is what we're really going to have to fall upon is that guy that, that, that doesn't matter the situation. You know, we've got a lot of guys with different personalities and guys are going to be a motivator at this point in time and a motivator at this point in time. But who are those guys that are going to be the true leaders that are going to have the consistency, the unselfishness to, to make others around them better? Last question, Tim. Uh, one quickie, did you vote for Vrabel for captain? <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and number two. I can't remember. I've been hitting the head too yeah, many times. Number two, 
Can you give us your rotation right now, you think, at linebacker? Who do you expect to play on Saturday? I mean, again, there's some different packages for a lot of different guys. If we went out there today and started, it would be Curtis Grant in the middle, Ryan Shazier at Will, and, and Joshua Perry at Sam. And the thing that, that, uh, that this crew is going to be able to bring us is the ability to, to have some versatility. You might see a, a package with six DBs out there. You might see a package with two linebackers. You might see a package with one linebacker. And so, so we still have those abilities with some of those guys. You know, a guy that nobody talks about is a, is a Pitt Brown. Who, who's a fifth-year kid who, who, you know, it deserves and has proven to us and a lot of people that uh, there's a big role and a part for this, uh, for this defense, and it's not just the guy that can fill in for any position. So um, he's a guy that we're going to find a way to get more on the field and, and find a way to, you know, in whatever situation it is, to find those best 11. Is Mitchell, though, in your – or is he in your thinking now, for example, yeah. freshman? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a bunch of those freshman guys. They're, they're going to they're gonna be thrusted into that, uh, into that opportunity. And – you know, that's why Coach talks about that competitive excellence idea is that when your opportunity arises, if you, you don't take it and you don't go and you don't, you know, show that you can do it, uh, those, those opportunities sometimes come few and far between.